Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta, and this is the first in a series of conversations that I will be having with Hemendra Hazari. He is an independent analyst of India's banking sector. He very, very closely scrutinizes this sector, especially the working of private banks. And his articles are often eye-opening, controversial, but there are a lot of people who don't want to publish him simply because they depend on advertising support from these large banks who he is critical of. Among other places that he writes for is Smart Karma, which is a website based out of Singapore, which promotes independent analysis, and of course, the wire Portal. Thank you so much, Hemindra, for coming here and giving us your time. Let's start with the big story. The big story is, of course, the ICICI Bank, the entire Chanda Kocher episode. What is your comment on the recent statement made by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, who is currently under treatment for soft tissue cancer in the United States? And he, in a blog, which has been published on Facebook, cautioned the Central Bureau of Investigation against what he described as investigative adventurism. And I quote him, there is a fundamental difference between investigative adventurism and professional investigation. Sitting thousands of kilometers away, when I read the list of potential targets in the ICICI case, the thought that crossed my mind was again the same. Instead of focusing primarily on the target, it is a journey to nowhere, and then within parenthesis, or <coughs> everywhere being undertaken, question mark. If we include the entire who's who of the banking industry, with or without evidence, what cause are we serving or actually hurting. It is uh, clear what uh, that the finance minister of this country is concerned about the who's who of India's banking and financial sector being named in the first information report lodged by the Central Bureau of Investigation. But before I come into the names of the people mentioned in the FIR, how do you react to Mr. Jaitley's comments? I think this is an unprecedented comment by a serving very senior member of the cabinet. I don't remember any such comment made by any member of government against its own investigative arm, which is the Central Bureau of Investigation. Now, I wouldn't have minded if Mr. Jaitley was an independent commentator. Then I think he has every right to make such a statement. But if when you're a senior member of the government, and that too, you were just the finance minister just a few days before. He's still officially the finance minister. Very much so. Then Mr. Piyush Goel is officiating because of his ill health. So then he is speaking as the finance minister of this country when he makes such a statement. And I think this was an uncalled for statement. Because such statements, if he were to truly believe, it should have been said privately. Now we come to the contents of this statement. Now, it's rather surprising that he suddenly wakes up and finds that the CBI is making these adventurous investigations. The question then lies is, has the CBI doing it earlier as well? Because if you see the case of Bank of Maharashtra, for example, the chairman, the, the CEO and his number two were indeed arrested by the Bombay police or the Pune police. At that time, Jaitley did make some generalized comment, but he never specifically voiced his dissent on this. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you know, from where he sits, I'm sure the PNB headquarters only a few kilometers away and not thousands of kilometers away. Mm -hmm. Even when she was charged, she did. You mean the ICICI Bank headquarters? No, the PNB, the Punjab, Punjab National, National Bank, Bank, where okay. the, the Nirav Modi scam happened. Okay. And where the Central Bureau of Investigation determined that it was the CEO has to accept you know, responsibility mm -hmm. for what, in my view, would have been a procedural lapse, which would have been an administrative matter and not a criminal matter. But even then, the, when she was dismissed subsequently from the bank, you know, the Allahabad Bank, you did not hear him come out and make any defense. And mind you, these are government banks. 
The government is the owner, he's the finance minister. But lo and behold, when it comes to the private sector, when it comes to people of ICICI Bank or the representatives representing Standard Chartered Bank or Tata Capital, suddenly you find... I'll, I'll come to that in a bit. Hemindra, the preliminary inquiry of the CBI was registered on the 8th of December 2017. This pertains to the allegedly illegal manner in which funds were sanctioned by the ICICI Bank. Two companies in the so Videocon group, headed by Mr. Venu Gopal Dood, which in turn was used to financially support companies controlled by Chanda Kocher's husband and other family members. Mr. Deepak Kocher and others. On Wednesday, the 23rd of January, the CBI registered a FIR, alleging that the ICICI Bank had been cheated of 1,730 crores. Now, Mr. Jaitley, and I continue to read what he wrote in his Facebook blog, says, adventurism leads to media leaks, ruins reputations, and eventually invites strictures and not convictions. In the process, the targets are ruined because of harassment, loss of reputation, and financial costs. It costs people their career, he wrote, and he added a word of advice to the CBI. He says, follow the advice of Arjun in the Mahabharat. Just concentrate on the bull's eye. What he's suggesting, perhaps in not so many words, but the very fact that the FIR suggests that the CBI may probe the role of various bigwigs. Mr. Sanjoy Chatterjee, chairman and co-CEO of the Goldman Sachs Group in India. Ms. Zareen Daruwala, CEO of Standard Chartered Bank. Mr. Rajiv Sabarwal, CEO of Tata Capital. Mr. Homi Khusro Khan, director in the bank, who's also an advisor to the Tata Group. Importantly, important functionaries in the bank and group companies, its present CEO, Mr. Sandeep Bakshi, its former CEO, Mr. K.V. Kamath, who's now the president of the New Development Bank, earlier known as the BRICS Bank, BRICS Development Bank, BRICS being an acronym for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And if, of course, he's the former chairman of the ICICI Bank, and many people believe that Mrs. Chanda Kocher was groomed by him to be his successor. And of course, there is Mr. N.S. Kannan of ICICI Prudential Life Insurance, the CEO. And um, so it's clear that Mr. Jaitley believes that the CBI should not have named all these individuals whose names I've just read out in the FIR. What are your views? I think it's very clear to everybody that he's most concerned about the reputation of these private institutions, which is in the private sector. He doesn't seem to be very concerned when government bankers are implicated, they spend time in judicial custody and then are subsequently released without any case. At that moment in time, he doesn't seem to de be defending their interests. But when it comes to the interests of certain companies in the private sector, he rises to their defense very publicly, as if he's shouting from the ramparts. So this is what you see in today's world is that the private sector is glorified and nobody can really touch them and anyone dares touch them, the government will come to the rescue. But when someone does the same thing to government entities, there is no one to defend them at all. My only issue here is this, that he should treat both equally. If he feels that there's political adventurism by the Central Bureau of Investigation, he should even voice it when they were targeting government bank officials because there have been many cases on similar grounds that Garcinia government bank officials have been implicated. And at that time, nobody in government ever comes out to defend them. Mr. Hazari, the entire episode concerning Mrs. Chanda Kocha, her husband Deepak Kocha, uh, companies which are controlled by him like New Power Renewable, Supreme Energy, which was originally a, a company which was partly controlled by him and partly with uh, associates and Mr. Venukopal Dhut, who heads the Videocon group. This entire maze of transactions uh, that took place was exposed by the Indian Express newspaper on the 29th of March, 2018. <coughs> That's about 10 months ago. 
And these pertain to a series of these very complex transactions between 2008 and 2013. Subsequently, what happened was that the board of the ICICI expressed their full faith in Mrs. Chanda Kocher, who was then the chief executive officer and managing director. She went on leave on the 18th of June and formally resigned on the 4th of October 2018. Do you think the ICICI board uh, should have uh, expressed full faith in her in the manner it did? Of course not. Because if it had done so, it should first have done an independent investigation which should have cleared her. And then I can understand if the board reposes faith in her. But what we have seen was that there was really no independent uh, investigation done. There was one supposedly legal entity, which the media said was Cyril Amarachand Mangaldas, uh, which had, and Shroff, which had uh, done an independent investigation. But then after some evidence came out, they subsequently withdrew that investigation, the entire report. So the way the private sector works, and this is what I have been observing very closely in other banks, is when the CEO is ever targeted, the first reaction of the board, when my mind you, when I say the board, I really get emphasis on the independent directors on the board, is not to do an independent investigation, but it is the, their first priority is to defend the CEO instead of trying to defend the institution. And that is where their priorities lie, that under any cost, even at the cost of the reputation of an institution, as we have seen in ICICI Bank's case, they will just leap to the defense of the CEO without doing really any major investigation. As we can see in this particular matter, everything unraveled very quickly then and for the entire credibility of ICICI Bank's board. The ICICI board decided to appoint a retired judge of the Supreme Court of India, Justice B. N. Sri Krishna. Under him, there was a panel of experts, and they are submitting a report which is independent or parallel, if you like, to the CBI investigation that's been going on or continues. Uh, that committee is yet to submit its report. Uh, do you think that the manner in which the circumstances under which this committee headed by Justice B. N. Sri Krishna was appointed, uh, perhaps, uh, what does it indicate to you? Firstly, there was so much pressure brought on ICICI Bank then because of media reports that they were forced to do something like that. If there had not been this media pressure, I don't think they would have even appointed a, you know, a committee headed by a former judge to do it. So it was the media pressure that compelled them to do it. Now, having said that, it is my experience that in the private sector, when the CEO is targeted for doing something unethical or illegal, in my view, the, the, any investigation which is managed by the company has less credibility. Because typically what we find is that such re investigative independent uh, agencies, whoever they appoint, they have some linkages that we may not know with the concerned entity. And therefore, there's always a doubt whether it's going to be objective or not. So when the CEO is a target, I would you know, give far more credibility to reg you know, government regulatory agencies which do the investigation than by any investigation which has been appointed by the company. In this particular case, uh, relating to uh, Mrs. Chanda Kocha, her husband Deepak Kocha, and the transactions with the Videocon group headed by Mr. Venugopal Dut, do you think these entire transactions have gone beyond the realm of propriety, ethics, conflicts of interest, or even sweetheart deals, if you like, and today entered into the realm of whether their law has been violated, whether provisions of the Indian Penal Code have been violated, whether uh, the provisions of the Prevention of Corruption Act have been violated. See, what I can say definitely that there's a conflict of interest. Now, whether any illegal or whether any quid pro quo was done, that is for the, you know, for the CBI now to determine. But in my opinion, which was very stark from the very beginning, 
that there was a conflict of interest. Mrs. Chanda Kocha should not have been present in the committee which then sanctioned the loan to Videocon when her husband was involved in a company where Videocon was also involved. That to me is very clear. No, you but have... she, suppose she play, I, I'm playing devil's advocate. She says, I didn't know uh, about the business dealings of my husband. Well, you ought to know. Or, or uh, my, my um, brother-in-law, who is technically not my relative un under certain provisions of the Companies Act. You see, in this case, it may not have been illegal as of yet, what we know. But definitely it raises a question of corporate governance because corporate governance goes beyond legality. It is, you know, it doesn't have to be illegal for norms of corporate governance to be, you know, to have not been met. And in this case, and in any bank which you work, and I worked in some of these very large banks, you have to give a very stringent disclosure what your family's investments are, what they do, then the internal compliance departments checks it out. And if you're found to have lied, then there's a very high possibility there'll be strict censors against you and you may even lose your job. So you See, I have gone through that process myself, so I know what so these... Which, which bank did you work in? See, I have worked with a lot of the big banks like UBS, Society General, you know, HSBC. So these norms are very, they're very much there. So you're saying internal governance mechanisms to ensure due diligence to avoid conflicts of interest were perhaps not done in this particular instance in the ICICI but bank? Apparently so. And there is more responsibility on such a senior person that they have to disclose. You cannot say, I do not know what my spouse is doing. I mean, you better know what's going on. No, Mrs. Chanda Kocha joined the ICICI bank in 1984. She was a management trainee. She eventually rose to become its managing director, chief executive officer in May 2009. She, she is not only considered the, 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 the face of retail banking in India, she is the so-called poster woman of Indian banking and, and everything that's supposed to be good and efficient about private, private sector banking. And, and today she is, uh, her image has been badly tarnished. But is it a case of, I go back to where I started, is the CBI on firm ground? Or is it indulging in adventurism, to use the words of Finance Minister Arun Jaitley? Going by the evidence that we have seen, which is in the public domain, regarding Chanda Kocha, her husband, the companies that were involved at Videocon's own interest, in my opinion, I think CBI is on the right foot then. Because uh, Mr. Dhut and his associates transferred uh, their ownership in Supreme Energy that gave a loan of 64 crores to New Power which is a company controlled by Mr. Deepak Kochar and his associates. And this, there's a paper trail for all this. And, and, because and it went, the money went to a trust, which was headed by Mr. Kochar, for 9 lakh rupees. So does that sound a little... No, very clear. It, to me, as an analyst, I'm very clear that I think they have, the C Central Bureau of Investigation has a strong case. I think the whistleblower who first did this report, I think, did a very good job. No, his name is Mr. Arvind Gupta. Yes. I, so I, I mean, he, he says he's a shareholder and he said he would like to, like the government to inquire into the foreign funding of Indian companies and Indian banks. And he went on to say further to ANI that this could be just the tip of the iceberg. No, it could very well be. The, the point to your question is, I think the CBI is on very sure footing here, at least where Chanda Kocha's personal uh, quid pro quo, alleged quid pro quo or conflict of interest is concerned. Its footing may be less clear when it comes to the other individual's name because in the FIR that uh, is in the public domain now, there is no evidence put out that what was the quid pro quo for all these individuals. So at best we can say it was a lapse of procedure, which is not a criminal uh, act. Okay. My last question to you. Superintendent of Police, Sudhang Shudhar Mishra, who was part of a cell in the Central Bureau of Investigation in Delhi. It's called the Banking and Securities Fraud Cell. He's the person actually who signed the first information report uh, relating to this entire Chanda Kuchar episode on the 22nd of January. And the very next day, he was transferred to the Economic Offenses Branch of the CBI in Ranchi, capital of Jharkhand. Do you see something unusual in the manner in which this happened? Or you think, after all, it's the right of the government, the right of the CBI to transfer any officer wherever 
they wish to. If it was a, just a random event, then that possible explanation could hold. But given what we've seen in the last one month of what's happening in the Central Bureau of Investigation, everything looks extremely murky in India's premier criminal investigation, uh, you know, arm. So given in those light of these developments, the way so many transfers are being made, that this was a very sensitive case involving such a powerful bank in the private sector. And given the fact that for one year, you know, this FIR was not even uh, registered. So all these things just tell me that this is a highly politicized case, that there is a lot of people, big names More involved. More to it than meets the eye. Most definitely. So everything now becomes extremely suspicious. Even an innocent act now may be interpreted very differently. Because this case actually, from the very moment the whistleblower brought out his report, it has been totally ignored by the regulatory agencies, by the and ICICI then, Bank Board. So when you say regulatory agencies, you mean the Reserve Bank of India, you mean the Securities and Exchange Board of India, who else do you, would you include in that category? You know, all of them, now, whether there's enforcement directed, if there was outside money, which is, there's a possibility of. So all these agencies, and this is what I see repeatedly, really that uh, whistleblower reports normally are totally ignored by and, everybody. And, and this represents, would you say, a kind of a regulatory lapses which leads to crony capitalism? Whether it's regulatory lapses or whether it's regulatory capture, I think that needs to be investigated. Because in some cases, I would argue it's regulatory capture. Thank you so much, Mr. Hazari, for giving us your views. Uh, this is the first in a series of conversations that I'm going to have with you. And uh, in the next episode, let's discuss the IL and FS story. That's the Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services story, which too uh, is uh, an important non-banking financial company, which seems to have collapsed, resulting in waves uh, of uh, uh, sending many sectors of the financial markets into turmoil. So thank you once again. And you just heard independent analyst of India's banking sector, Himindra Hazari, discussing the entire episode concerning the ICICI Bank, Mrs. Chanda Kocha, her husband, the Videocon Group, and most importantly, the government's actions and finance minister Arun Jaitley's comments on the manner in which the Central Bureau of Investigation registered a first information re report in which big names in the banking sector have been named. In the next conversation that I will be having with Mr. Hazari, we look at the IL and FS story. Keep watching NewsClick and thank you for being with us.